Now, LGBTQ plus lobby group Stonewall brands lesbians sexual racists for raising concerns about being pressured into having sex with transgender women. A leaked email shows that the trans lobby have tried to suppress an investigation into claims that predatory trans women have pressured lesbians for sex before it was even published. Stonewall made the claim that debating the issues was equivalent to sexual racism. This is the latest episode amid growing concerns about the influence of Stonewall, which has paid millions of pounds for advertising, sorry, for advising public bodies, including the government, police forces and universities and a range of private companies. Yes, well, Angela Wilde is the co-founder of Get the L Out, a grassroots lesbian feminist activist group who wants to focus on women alliances and take lesbians out of LGBT. Uh, thank you for joining us again uh, this morning. Can you just explain to us what this even means, this term, uh, sexual racism, and why lesbians are being accused of this? Yes, good morning. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to talk about this. Um, very, very simply, I mean, I, I can't first of all blame people for being confused because it is made to be confusing. It's actually a very, very simple issue when you check out the transgender jargon. Um, lesbians are women who are sexually attracted to women exclusively and uh, by definition do not want to or ha uh, have sex with men. Now, what we get called by organizations such as Stonewall and the LGBT in uh, you know, in the wider context is that if a man identifies as a woman, uh, he, that makes him a woman <laughs> in the, in, you know, it, that makes him really a woman. And then that means that as lesbians, we are expected to have sex uh, and to include these people, these men into our dating pools. Uh, when we don't, we then get called transphobic and turfs, and then we get called racist and Nazis. Um, so that, that is in a, you know, very, the, the simplest way I can explain this, what's going on. I appreciate you doing that because like you said, it is deliberately designed to be confusing to, to people. Does it fundamentally as well hinge on the idea that groups like Stonewall believe that once a man has transitioned into womanhood, that they are then definitively a woman? Therefore, as a lesbian, you should, well, not should be attracted to them, but you certainly shouldn't not be attracted to them because they are a woman. So do you believe that if a man transitions into womanhood, they're not a woman? Uh, I believe that nobody can change sex. Clearly, uh, you know, you can call yourself whatever you like, you can dress whatever, you know, in the, whatever way you want, you can identify as whatever you want, but, you know, it doesn't make you that. And what is really very, very disturbing is that the rest of the population is then made to play that game to reinforce the illusion that these people actually do change sex. And when we say actually, no, you know, we don't agree and we do not want to um, follow this, uh, <laughs> this guideline, we don't want to follow this ideology, then we get called, you know, transphobic and hateful, not just lesbians. I think, you know, a lot of people see that now. For lesbians, it's specific because it, it then leads to sexual pressure and sexual violence. Well, talk, talk to me a little bit about that sexual pressure. Are you seeing now women coming to you and saying that they are actually feeling under pressure to sleep with someone who's trans, essentially? Absolutely, absolutely. What, what we've seen Stonewall doing is replicated in, in LGBT uh, circle, in LGBT group, in lesbian groups, where lesbians are constantly asked, you know, would you date a trans woman? Why wouldn't you date a trans woman? And that creates a huge social pressure. And it, I think especially targeting lesbians who are younger. Uh, th there's a big sexual scandal here um, because I have run a research that explained that, um, that actually showed that a, a certain amount of lesbians had been sexually coerced, groomed, harassed, and sometimes raped by men who identify as trans. And all this is, you know, within that culture, within that um, culture that is enforced by Stonewall and other organizations that just says, Men can be lesbian, you should accept them. If you don't, you're a bigot. Done about all this, and who is responsible for sort of protecting women, who protecting lesbians, who say, actually, I don't want to be forced into sleeping with or dating um, somebody who's a man biologically and tells me they're a woman. Is, it a, is there a role for the government in any of this? Absolutely. I think what, what we've seen yesterday, so there was this article who was which was published in the, in the mail, um, and and uh, as you explained, Patrick, um, the fact that Stonewall then um, pressured the BBC, tried to interfere within the BBC editorial process to 
silence a story. I think this is extremely serious because Stonewall is a charity that is funded millions of pounds by the government to advise on uh, LGBT issue and diversity issues. And what they are doing is using this money to actually, uh, in, in a very unethical way. I think Stonewall is clearly, demonstrably now, unfit for purpose and shouldn't get government funding because this is how they're going to use it. No, it's, 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 it's astonishing, really. It's astonishing. And, of course, they've got their league table as well, haven't they? So the more that you consult Stonewall for their advice and the more money you seem to be willing to give them, the higher, magically, the higher up that league table your company seems to go. And, and that seems a bit strange, doesn't it? And I want to say, I mean, the, we're talking about a specific lesbian issue, but this in, really impacts on, on many different levels because Stonewall are advising the police forces, the academia, the, the schools, plenty of government bodies, yeah. and they are getting this advice throughout, across the board. So it's very important that, uh, you know, BBC, for example, have left the Stonewall Diversity Champion Scheme and, and other bodies have as well. But I think it's not enough. I think Stonewall must go. Stonewall needs to stop being funded and it's not suitable to be a charitable organisation. Well, Angela, thank you so much for giving us your views this thank morning. Co-founder of Get the L Out, which is a grassroots lesbian feminist activist group. Um, it's just and it, it's a... worth noting, actually, as well, that not only has the BBC and many other organisations, but the UK's own equalities watchdog, the mm. body, the government yeah. tasks with ensuring we have equality mm. in this country, the ECHR, uh, has also left um, sort yeah. of stopped using the services of Stonewall, which to me is rather telling. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think as well, it's worth noting as well that when they use the phrase, you know, trans as well, it doesn't necessarily mean people who are post-op all the time as well. So in some cases, what they do mean there is people who are yet to transition, so i.e. men with full male genitalia, and if you are a lesbian, the idea that you wouldn't necessarily want to sleep with that person, they still regard as sexual racism. Well, I mean, th this, that can't stand, you mm. know, that, that can't stand. And, and, and there's, isn't there almost as well a certain hypocrisy there between, you know, the idea of sexual freedom and sexual liberation, but at the same time trying to force people to be attracted and indeed engage in sexual acts in a way with a certain group of people. It doesn't seem to quite marry up that for me. Yes, lots of uh, hypocrisy on that issue. So get in touch with your views, gbviews mm. at gbnews.uk and let us know what you think uh, about it all. But for